to another episode of Tennis United. Vashik, things are slowly opening up. Slowly. But slowly. Uh, what's one thing you're going to be doing when everything gets back to normal? Yeah, they are opening up slowly. Rules are a little different all over the world. But uh, for me, I, honestly, I just can't wait to get on a plane. What? I never thought I would say like, it. I never thought I would say it. I thought I hated traveling, like, but I now that I've been sitting in one place for so long, I'm I I like can't wait to to cross a border, any border. I'll just cross any border and I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Take my passport. I'm I'm yeah. coming over. <laughs> what about you? Minus the airports and airplanes, I definitely can't wait to see uh, my friends on tour again. Like seriously, I, I actually miss the tournaments. I miss going from city to city, week in and week out. I'm not gonna lie, I have a really big list of restaurants here in mm. Phoenix and Scottsdale that I'm dying to go try out. Uh, a little bit of shopping, I've missed that. Definitely got to make a Sephora well, stop. Yeah, the online shopping has been a big epic fail for me. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't know why you didn't text me because I can really help you out with this. Like I'm, I'm yeah. a pro. I can talk about shopping all day long. Come on now. All right, Bethany, enough of the small talk. We have a great show. We're going to get right into it. Guys, I'm joined here with a very special guest, Novak. How are you doing, buddy? Good to see you, Vasek. Yeah, Great. Man. Thanks for inviting me. No, this will be fun. Where are you right now? I'm in Spain at the moment. I came from United States. Obviously, when Indian Wells was canceled, we I came over to Marbella, Spain, and met my family here. And we've been here for two and a half months. All right, Novak, we're actually joined by Garbine, who I believe is in the kitchen right now. Garbine. Garbine. Are Hola. you doing? ¿Qué pasa? I'm in the kitchen. I'm literally cooking. <laughs> You're cooking. What are you cooking? I am. I am cooking a Spanish omelet. Ooh. Wow. I'm cooking the potatoes and the onions. Oh, oh my god. And it together. Um, that looks so you made that? that? Looks incredible. Yeah. And then you have to put it in oh the my pan god. now that it's warm and then you put it and then you have to flip it, which is the tricky part. Is that your favorite meal, Garbine? No, it's not my favorite. I love it because it's like very Spanish. I feel like a lot of people think that maybe paella is super Spanish, but I think like the tortilla de patatas is like the basic, you know, every home in Spain food. As I'm in Spain at the moment, Garbina, I can send you some olives maybe or something like that. Maybe olive oil. Whoa, I love olive oil. I'll use it every day for everything. It's super important. It's a key. Nice. It's a key for the flavor. For the flavor. To longevity. Is that something that's usual or is this a quarantine meal or? Well, it's not very usual because, you know, with all the traveling that we do and all the hotels and, um, you know, we don't usually have a kitchen and a time to cook. So, um, you know, I'm using this quarantine to just do some homemade recipes, you know, from my mom and, you know, go shopping, go to the grocery, which I love. And it's, it's already different. Something so simple with our lifestyle is already so different that um, I'm enjoying that part, improving my, my cooking skills. What, what's your breakfast? What's your go-to? I know nothing, been, man, you're I'm the big starving. diet guy, right? <laughs> are you are you fasting? I'm fasting, yes. I've just started like a couple of days ago. You gotta tell me what the routine, you gotta tell me. I'm doing this intermittent fasting. Uh, okay. So it basically, you know, I try to go for 16 hours of yeah. not really consuming any major calories or anything that will require energy for digestion and then eight hours eating. I like to start the day, not every day, but I like to start always the day with uh, like some warm water, lemon, um, silver drops. They're really, yeah. really good for like um, all the bacteria, all the stuff, you know, because you're detoxifying and stuff. Mm. And, uh, and then I like to like have a green juice uh, or a green smoothie with like spinach, all the leafy greens, spirulina, all the stuff, and and fruits. So I'm I'm not yeah. really I'm not I'm not going for a, a typical Spanish heavy meal like Garbine has presented <laughs> there. Where are you going? <laughs> so I, I don't know. I don't know. To each their own, we, right? <laughs> I don't know how we would manage. I guess I would be the one that would prepare juices. You know, I'm, I'm actually at the low expense for you, Garbine. You know, you, you wouldn't spend a lot of money on me. I don't eat anything for half a day. Yeah, just fruits, a little bit of water, you know. Exactly. It's so low maintenance. It's it's so low and maintenance. a lot of sun, and a lot of sun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have you, Garbine, have you ever done that? The intermit intermittent fasting? Have you tried it before? I, no, I've never tried it. Okay, I let's love do it. I love eating. That's Let's do it. Tough. 
know about do you cook do you cook for people i prepare my breakfast it takes a lot of time you know like like <laughs> water and like lemon <laughs> and like fruit <laughs> what is your your diet right now like if you can share i don't know but i know you were like vegan for a while well, it's a plant-based it's plant-based basically plant -based. Yeah. it's been like this for five years actually i grew up in a certain way actually i grew up on the opposite side of the spectrum i was yes. eating meat three times a day yeah, well, and everything so i i changed that i changed that and i'm really i'm i'm i like it the way it is and nova after after your career let's say so many years um do you see yourself like coming back to like um on your kitchen more table. Relax, more like <laughs> Having relax, a nice homeland. Food, like a barbecue, barbecue on Sundays, or, or you keep the same like strict diet. What do you think? I, I, I have occasional barbecues with my friends, but you know, I have vegetables. <laughs> I have potatoes <laughs> and that's it, okay. you know? I'm fine, you know, I'm okay with that. I, I have uh, I have I have my salad, you know. I have the the vegetables, potatoes, and stuff. I guess that question means that you're thinking you might relax a little bit with your diet after your career. Is that right? No, I feel I feel like I've, my mom is a nutritionist, so I grow up okay. always, you know, with a good common sense and a good like basis of what to eat and what not to yeah. eat. So yeah, I take care of it. I'm not too strict because I, you know, it's yeah. it's a pleasure. I. I like that i enjoy it but you know i take care of it and i think that even after i stop playing tennis you know as an athlete you want to feel healthy yeah. and you know good with lifestyle yourself. so i might have more ice creams and stuff like that but you know i will yeah. keep like a good um a good diet yeah and we'll have more from barbini and novak later in the show So Bethany, I don't know if you've noticed, but Naomi Osaka is coming out of her shell a little bit this week. Listen, I've seen her doing her Insta lives and is Naomi becoming an extrovert these days? Maybe she's a little bit more comfort comfortable asking the questions than answering them, but let's check them out. Okay, what's your favorite Avenger? I'm gonna go Thor. I don't know if I like you anymore, to be honest. <laughs> I really don't. Thor? <laughs> wow. Uh, what was your favorite Avenger? The Iron Man and Spider-Man are right there. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Um... Probably cookies and cream. Why? Oh my god. <laughs> Why? Oh, you don't like me anymore. Uh, it's... <laughs> it's really hard. Okay, I still like you. It's really hard to accept this. If you were in a dance battle, what is the dance that you would like start with? The doggy. I love the doggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cool, but I love the doggy. Uh, the rhythm is good, and uh, the vibes, you know, when you lean to the left, lean to the right, you know, it's just... What I do, I put Greek olive oil to my hair. Then I, um, I add some uh, wasabi to it. No, you're such a liar. <laughs> like... And then I put some vinegar as well. It blends in really well with all the wasabi and olive oil. And then uh, I leave it uh, on my yeah. hair for around 25, 30 minutes. I definitely put mayonnaise, that's for sure. Sometimes, not like, it, it's it's uh, one time per week. Wow, that's crazy. And it doesn't smell? Did you actually believe me? I'm making things up. Wow, <laughs> that's terrible. Wow. Oh my god. So I know both Naomi and Steph have been pretty outgoing about their shyness. They So I'm kind of surprised to see them do an Insta Live together. I feel like they're both coming out of their shells together. And guys, stay tuned. Uh, the next couple weeks, you'll be seeing them on Tennis United. Oh, this oh, is cute. They're matching. I oh, love yeah. this. Oh. This is a very important skin routine, Vashik. I think you need to pay attention because you need to know when to put your serums on, when to put your lotions on. I'm really pumped to see that Olympia is learning she's this while so she's cute. young. Vashik, tell me a little bit about your skincare routine. I'm, I'm curious how you keep that baby face, baby soft. I don't, you know why I just wake up like this. This is another video from our regular on Seriously? the Roundup. I think, uh, I think we know how she's spending most of her time during the quarantine. Nothing too productive. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> this is super productive. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, this is funny. <laughs>
This is a great idea, by the way. I can't, Wait, have you I've, have you played uh, tennis in the no. dark? Actually, I have I've, played. I've played tennis in the dark, and where it's almost impossible to see anything. But I've never actually tried to go in the dark <laughs> tennis. That's a lot smarter. I think it might just be better to wait for the sun to come up. <laughs> no, Footwork? I thought the dog was impressive. Impressive. This is wait, incredible. Did just, wait, did he just make oh my God. every single volley? He's got the new French Open kit. Come on. Is it? No. Like, <laughs> oh, oh no! Look, this is like he's he's been watching the Jordan documentary. Clearly, look at the air he got there. This is unbelievable. No, he made every single one though. I love this look guy. This. this is my favorite video. So it's interesting to see that tennis courts around the world are starting to open up again. Obviously, tennis is one of those sports where you can still socially distance and play, but it's been fun seeing everyone get back on the court a little bit. We actually have a video here that got me a little bit excited. I saw this one earlier on social media. Let's play it. This is Stefano Tsitsipas and Felix Ojeleasim battling it out as if, as if this was a like a tournament. Which okay. Is cool. Look at that. Oh, this. Oh, that's just the back signature backhand on the line. Shot. Come on now. He loves that. He got me on. First of all, their movement. Times. Their movement is looking pretty crisp. I feel like they didn't take too much time off their fitness here. They're looking pretty no. sharp. No, they've definitely been training. Rafa making his long-awaited comeback to the court. I think everyone is pretty amped for this. Yeah, it, and of course it would have uh, slow motion and music. I, it does. That is, <laughs> that is just what happens what naturally mean? when he when he comes onto the court. Ash Barty in the mix, French Open champ. She is definitely getting also ready Also looking for pretty French. good. But uh, look, I mean, she has the grass court right next to her, so I feel like she's just uh, mixing up her surfaces here since we're not quite sure what we're starting on. All right, Swiatek getting in on the action, throwing in a little trick shot. I've seen this, I've seen a couple of these. I love oh, how oh, she said, pumped. let's pretend that it was in because she could have just said it was in and we would all believed her because it looked pretty, it looked pretty good. Yeah, not just Swiatek doing the, the trick shots, actually some fans getting on the action here. And this is a trick shot serve that is very, oh my God, I didn't even see what oh, happened there. That on. was very That's impressive. Vashik. That was a Vashik very, was that was a very, happened. very impressive trick shot right there. I will be honest. I know what you're going to pick, but please tell me, post of the week, what is it? Without a doubt is the monkey. I just did not see that coming at all. That one really caught me off guard and I thought it was pretty hilarious. <laughs> if I have to pick a favorite post of the week, I, I will agree with you about the monkey, but... I actually like the trick shot from the fan. Oh, yeah, How that's awesome a good one. How awesome was that? I thought I was pretty impressed. He might deserve it more. I'm still <laughs> gonna go with the monkey. All right. <laughs> so guys, we're gonna actually jump into a little game. The theme is first. So the first time in your life that, you know, you've done whatever it is I'm gonna ask you. What was the, the first time that you cried after a win. I remember the first tournament that I ever played in my life, the first competition I had officially, I was eight. So I won like eight, eight all, first match ever, eight all, tie break, 10, eight, you know, I was Backhand like- Backhand down um, the line, sliding backhand down the line. Exactly. <laughs> Passing shot. Stretch, full stretch. <laughs> yeah. um, I was, uh, I was, I was really, uh, you know, obviously filled with joy and everything, but I was very exhausted. And my mom was there; she hugged me, and then for some, when she hugged me, I started crying. And then the next day, I lost uh, to actually to Viktor Troitsky, like nine zero. That was my Victor my will love end. to see this. And then I and then I cried again. So I um, <laughs> I cried pretty much a lot when I was a kid. When did Garbina, When did you play your first um, first tournament? The first tournament I played was in Venezuela when I was six years old. And oh. I remember because I can say oh. that I won the first tournament that I played. So I was super oh happy and gosh. excited. I know, I know. And she turned pro the following day. <laughs> okay, next question is, who is the first person you call after a big win? After a big win, I would say I just call my family and they'll all just, you know, a family call. Mom, for sure, mom is, Mom is always there uh, in good and bad times. Truly, you know, cares about you, you care about them, and then you can kind of share the, that moment of joy with them um, intrinsically. What is the first thing that you bought for yourself? Like the, a nice, after a nice paycheck, what is the first like treat, if you remember? Oh, I know this one, I know this one. 
ladies first, please. Let me think about it. I actually know how much it was. It was 258 euros because I was like, <laughs> okay, I have to win this tournament because I need to buy my MP3. I, I oh, wanted cool. to buy an MP3 because you know, I had this Dixman where you put the CD. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you were doing fitness with it and you were running and jumping, was bouncing. <laughs> but the CD, you couldn't hear the music. It was You're like running with a stereo. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I think for me, it was uh, a jersey of like, of the sports club, you know, football club or basketball club, you know, boys, boys in sports, right? What was the most hiring match that you played? I was playing my first main draw in Australia um, and it, it was one of those hot days, you know, like the sun, you could feel it like burning in the skin. And I remember playing Ribarikova and it was just because it was my first main draw. I was so nervous. I couldn't win. I'm like, can you just calm down? And we both were like dramatic, you know, cramping and <laughs> crying and oh. yelling and got worried. It was a dramatic match. And I remember that I won that match and I felt so exhausted that I lost like one and one next round. Like, I that. Novak, what about you, man? What's the, uh, what is the most physical draining match you played? It's final, finals of Australian Open in 2012 against Rafa, uh, five yeah. hours, 53 minutes. Yeah, that, that was oh probably, that's oh probably, there. Probably hard to repeat that ever in, in my career, uh, um, but uh, yeah, oh it was uh, what what is so long. It's too long. It's too long. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It For me, just, five uh, minutes fifty three seconds is enough uh, against either of you. <laughs> Not five hours fifty three. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, that was yeah. the, that was the when you guys needed the chairs in the in the presentation, right? That's when you were exactly. sitting down on the chairs. And yeah. uh, and you understand that it's finals of slam, and it's fifth set, and you're just it's kind of the, the end is around the corner, so I don't want to stop now. So you keep pushing yourself mentally, you lose that sense of what's happening mm. in the body, and then it's something that carries you all the way through. It's quite amazing. Can I ask uh, Garbinia a question? Um, uh, before you have your uh, walk on the court, like you have always your um, your headphones or, or or your music on like that is it something more that kind of you know gets gets you moving before the match you're gonna laugh but i love putting like like rocky songs I, I, it's so funny like rocky songs yeah. like movies you know like i'm so bummed up like yeah you know it's, it's so funny it's my moment i have to be concentrated it's just, just blocks a little bit my thoughts even though it's it's hard i'm gonna end it right there because you've been so generous with your time uh this was so fun Thank, Thank you, you guys. Have a nice one. Cheers. Bye -bye. Sonia Mirza in the house today. Um, I'm kind of excited that I get to start my morning with you, buddy. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Healthy, which is the most important thing. People who don't follow tennis have spoken to me about Tennis United, believe it or not. All right. Yeah, they've, they've said that it's really good that, you know, like, because I think they don't really get to see men and women do so much together. Um, yeah. And I think it's pretty exciting for, for them as well, like for just for people. Yeah. I don't know if it's no. lack of things to watch on TV. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, we're not going to roll with that. We're just going to say we're super entertaining and we'll leave it at that. How's the family? Everyone's doing good? It's tough because my husband's stuck. He's in Pakistan and he got stuck midway playing a tournament actually. And, and they went to oh, wow. lockdown. So it's been a while since you've seen Yeah, him. it's been like three months. I mean, since lockdown, basically. No like, way. Since I left for Dubai and we don't really know when he's going to be able to see Izhan. And, you know, it's it's not easy, obviously, not knowing. It's so uncertain, but at least we're safe. But yeah, tell me, I mean, dude, look, you just started playing again in January. Like, how did, like, you took all this time off and then you come back, you win your first tournament and now everything's at a pause. Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it was a bit of a waste of, a of my work. Why did I train so hard? I was like, I could have taken another year. Like, I didn't have to push now. <laughs> Just kidding. Giving birth and stuff, for me, it was a new experience as well. And to come back, I, I had to put my body through a lot, like a lot, a lot. And, um, you know, and I was really looking forward to it because I felt like, you know, I started getting in the groove. For me, honestly, like on a broader perspective, just feels that you should be lucky and happy 
that you know you're with your family and you're safe. You've been working with a lot of local charities to to help out around. Tell me tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, we just tied up with this with this NGO who had volunteers and stuff, and we uh, the movement was called Youth Feed India. Uh, you know, we we were uh, supplying just these daily wage workers who literally go from day to day who suddenly had zero money like because there was a lockdown and they had nothing coming in um, anymore no food and they still had like stomachs to feed i um, yeah so we we helped about over over 100,000 families oh sadia i miss you thanks so much for uh, coming on and and chatting with me i mean you know i always love catching up with you it's a lot of fun and now i can tell everyone that i was called on tennis united <laughs> All right, another star-studded Tennis United episode. Vashik, what'd you think of this one? I thought it was great. The videos just keep getting better. I think we're doing better and better. Uh, we want all of you to keep sending in your videos. Make sure you hashtag tennis at home and home court. And if you're lucky, you will get your video played on next week's episode of Tennis United. Definitely, and we are ending this episode with a little piano number from Ugo Umbert.